Yeah. But yeah, it's true. What I mean, yeah, what I'm interested in is in this idea of like layering up history and, and the fact that this happened as a type of like physical representation of history from yeah. the development of the landscape as a type of like colonial holding to yeah. introduction of uh, a capitalist and consumer consumer based society. And yeah. as the, uh, as these things disappear, like what is that significance of that disappearance and and what what follows? Project is one where it was really influenced by COVID in the sense that it probably should have been done years ago, but um, you know the pandemic really interrupted both the workflow and my ability to travel to Vietnam, and also yeah. the fact that it's actually in some ways very similar to the 1972 project on the capsules in that um, it literally does deal with something on the verge of disappearance and has mostly disappeared. Uh, especially after the start of the pandemic. So the project SGN um, deals with uh, the utility poles that were originally constructed by the French as part of their colonial enterprise in um, developing um, the urban infrastructure and the industrial potential of Vietnam and specifically um, Saigon. So uh, I was really interested in the fact that these remnants of French colonialism still existed very visibly in the urban landscape of uh, Ho Chi Minh City. And on top of that, uh, it was kind of being used in a really uh, unexpected way uh, in the sense that uh, everything kind of accumulated over time in terms of both the weathering of the utility poles themselves, like which were like really obsolete by this point, but also had like physical marks or physical accumulation of uh, everything that happened since uh, the uh, the Vietnamese economy kind of transitioned to more uh, of a, a market system. Sure. Yeah, let's take a look. Yeah. Yeah, like I did, I really focused on working on this project in the summer of 2019, where I took, actually 2019, I took three separate trips to Vietnam to kind of get going with this particular research and project. Um, And what's interesting looking at this particular image now is that this site no longer exists, site as in like S-I-G-H-T. Since 2019, um, this utility pole, what you know, after that point, it was removed. So you can no longer see this when you actually go to this intersection. But in 2019, this still remained in that you know you see the French uh, the utility pole that was originally constructed by the French uh, based on uh, the steel lattice system, and you know it was originally kind of intended to serve uh, a specific type of purpose and probably had a capacity limit in terms of like, you know, both like electrical and the uh, telegram wires. Uh, it's a product, it started appearing in the landscape of um, Saigon around the turn of the century, possibly late 1890s, but definitely by the 19, early 1900s. Uh, and you still, you kind of see it up until the end, end of the French colonial regime in terms of using this particular type of design. But um, you see, you know, in terms of like all the wires that accumulated since the 1990s, and especially the 2000s, in terms of like uh, since the uh, economy transition from like uh, one that specifically focuses on socialism to something that's more integrated into the global market. So uh, you see all the accumulation of like, say, the fiber optics as both the economy and society change in Vietnam. So it's quite an amazing site, you know, and many of the, I, I believe that many of these photographs, you know, were taken. Um, I knew that these uh, utility poles were in the process of being removed from the city, but also it was kind of like the apex of the accumulation of wires. 
So it kind of reached both an endpoint and a maximum point in terms of its usage. It, it looks dangerous. It looks, <laughs> it look like it's going to fall at any point in time. It's, but it's almost seems like there's a tension pulling it out and holding it up. It, it's, a. Uh, it's, it, yeah. you know, there's a, there's a, there's a strangeness about it. Almost like it's a, uh, a techno tree, you know, a technology type tree. And it's, and they're fascinating. And these are everywhere is what you were saying. Well, it used to be around the one, like, like you see it, freak, I think it used to be, the utility poles that were made by the French were everywhere in terms of, like, this urban center of Ho Chi Minh City. And yeah. you would, as, like, the um, Vietnamese economy experienced this, like, rapid ex accelerated growth in the early 2000s and 2010, I think more and more wires uh, started to accumulate on these existing utility poles that kind of went beyond their original usage or intent beyond their capacity. Yeah. Uh, but it also kind of follows a very similar thing that happened with many cities at the turn of the century, meaning from 1900s to two, uh, 1800s to 1900s in that, uh, for say, for example, New York, um, where, Eventually, the utility poles has so many wires that it was considered both a danger and a blight. So yeah. in terms of this idea of modernization of Ho Chi Minh City to the global market, uh, it's they're following a very similar thought process in terms of removing them, both in terms of like removing them as a blight and also modernizing the landscape in relation to the global market. Yeah, it's true. I, I think a lot of this stuff goes underground. So you don't actually see and it above are. ground anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, in, in, it just seems like probably 90% of that's not even being used. It's just on top of each other. At the... <laughs> or is it? I don't know. Yeah. They're like, yeah. They, I mean, these utility poles that existed in this form, they kind of follow both this idea of like being functional and completely being functionless. <laughs> but uh, because Story you know, how life. do you? I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know, how do you? Or, yeah, like, I mean, how do you organize through this? Like, like what's just is frequently yeah. describes described as a rat's nest. You know. Yeah. But yeah, it's true. What I mean, yeah, what I'm interested in is in this idea of like layering up history and, and the fact that this happened as a type of like physical representation of history from yeah. the development of the landscape as a type of like colonial holding to yeah. introduction of uh, a capitalist and consumer consumer based society. And as the, uh, as these things disappear, like what is that significance of that disappearance, and and what what follows? And with this one too, you kind of you can kind of see the layering of images in the sense that you see that old colonial infrastructure kind of being used in a new way or kind of reaching its end life, and also the type of advertisement. Uh, in the background that kind of shows the shift in society. This is like another interesting image for me too, in that um, you see different phenomenons within the urban landscape. And this is very much towards like the center or the core of Ho Chi Minh City too, but you see, you know, like essentially the merging of two different kind of like not only styles, but states of construction or architecture. In the sense that in the background you see like a very more you know recent um, apartment complex you know that's like very elegantly produced you know uh, probably quite costly to live in and in the fore right uh, attached right on up next to it you see essentially things that are that are, a structure that is constructed out of out of corrugated uh, middle. It's like this piecemeal you know type approach to a. Uh... <laughs> master plan type architecture yeah it's a lot of contrast a lot of contrast a lot of tension here for sure yeah you see you know you see kind of like these sites still that exist in terms of like Ho Chi Minh City where 
if we were to use the idea of like, say, progress or development, like not everything is consistent or universal or linear, you know, that you see these tensions play out in terms of like discrepancies, yeah. not, you know, say in terms of like, say, wealth, economic status, priorities. Um, so, you know, you have phenomena like this too, where like the utility pole has been kind of incorporated into a private property, you know, it's no longer on the street proper, but it has been kind of like uh, eaten up by, uh, you know, say the house and also by the vegetation that kind of grows from the garden. It almost seems like they did it on purpose. <laughs> um, we got to make this look a little bit better. <laughs> yeah, it's never clear if it was done on purpose or it just happened by chance, but um, yeah. It is interesting, you know, and it's quite beautiful uh, that it happened. So you have more sites like this too, where um, the structure is uh, they're modernizing, but on top of on top of it's like the layering. Yeah, it's like uh, creating a Frankenstein in a way where uh, they keep on adding adding to it, but there's always a limit. When you were when you're doing this, and when you started to know this, notice these things. What was it that that drew you to it? Uh, what was you were just like I just uh, did you go to photograph and then you just noticed that I had a lot of these images or or were you just like that's interesting and uh, what made you start to focus on this? Well, I think it's certainly interesting on a visual level. Like sure. as a photographic image, I think it's something worthwhile to capture. I, I mean, to simply put. It's interesting that such a thing exists in the city that, you know, it's in front of you and it's visually dynamic. But I think kind of going, kind of connecting it to the previous projects as well, or specifically maybe the Nakagin Capsule Tower, like it's an embodiment of a society in change or some like a society in the process of change. And it also kind of taps into the history of the landscape itself, like something that is obsolete and yet still exists in this moment in time. And, wow. you know, I, I've thought a lot about, you know, what is the point of me taking photographs of these? But I do think that, you know, it's worthwhile taking photographs of these sites because, you know, again, it's on the verge of disappearance. And I think there is some significance to it on a historical level. And, you know, utility poles are, is public infrastructure. Um, it's not really in the realm of like, say, architecture proper or per se. So I think, you know, because it was such an ubiquitous part of everyday life, you know, if you were living in that city, uh, it becomes normal and it, it could, it could be something that's easily overlooked. Uh, and I think there's value in that too. You know, in the sense that because it was such an ubiquitous, it was such an ubiquitous, ubiquitous part of the landscape that it is worth taking images of before they disappear. And in many cases, these sites have disappeared. Well, and you were talking about the shift um, of society that, you know, joining the global market. And they also tell you a story of that transition and uh, where where they came from. And it's almost like... Um, and in some ways, the, the, the coverings have come off and you actually get to kind of see the bones of change. Um, you get to see kind of that, that shifting, these new worlds starting to collide uh, right in front of you. And, and uh, you said they're, they're disappearing uh, naturally, you know, because of the natural progress or the natural evolution of this type of infrastructure, like you were talking about in New York. And so you're you're getting to witness that same kind of uh, evolution, um, and uh, it seems that like you, when you look at these things, and I'm and I'm starting to see a a uh, connection here. You're you're looking at time at a grand scale, um, and you're noticing time um, more than just the immediate. You're looking at layering. You're looking at forgotten. You're looking at an original idea that didn't manifest or like a 50 year time frame. And 
Have you always been interested in kind of a larger perspective of time, that evolution? Or have you have you looked at it like that before? Well, I think it's like worthwhile to try to make work or images that have that are somewhat complicated, you know, where it's not yeah. simply like a one dimensional in terms of its content or making something as a type of like on a basic level, it's just aesthetically pleasing or, 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 yeah. as, or as a type of formal exercise where if it is possible, I am interested in this idea of like, how do you compress time into a single frame and multiplicities of time in that, you know, I don't know if this is necessarily grand scale, but looking at, like say a site like this, it, it does try to kind of have a dialogue with like, say a span of a century, you know, from the idea of French colonialism, trying to exploit this particular land and its people for its agenda to say the different, uh, uh, regimes that control this land from like say the South Vietnamese government to the communist government and then to the shift in terms of the governmental policies that you know how does this essentially a normal or ordinary or in a like insignificant place provide insight to the trajectory of this land over a course of a century from colonialism to independence to civil war, to now, you know, rapid economic growth. So I think, it's you know, it is, yeah. All buried it, it there. Is. And it's, it's yeah. so <laughs> you, when you, when you give it that kind of context, these, this, it, it comes through 100%. And uh, I, I think what I'm fascinated by is your consciousness of that that layering, you know, that, that being able to be conscious of it and, and paying attention to it and to, to make an effort to use a camera to portray it. Um, well done. Yeah. But the thing is, it's this question of like, even before making an image, like you have this, like one, can one have the sense of observation of seeing yeah and interpret it, interpreting the landscape, you know, where yeah. making these, the historical and political implications of things visible through the act of making an image, you know, things that yeah. are in some ways invisible. So I think that's, that's where a lot of the work happens or the part, at least for me, where, you know, it's kind of, it, it really kind of determines whether a work is worthwhile or not. Yeah. Yeah. It in the depth is is there. You can you can feel your sense of research, your your care for it. It's um it's not just a utility pole. There's there's so much more buried in it. You know, it's it's still like a work in progress, so I am kind of thinking about it. I'm still thinking through it in terms of like why I'm doing it what is this worth? So, yeah. you know, a lot of it is still to be determined or, you know, the way I'm talking about it, there is this sense of uncertainty. But I think that's a healthy yeah. thing. You know, I think that of you course. do need some self-doubt. You have to kind of question yourself, you know? Like, yeah. Well, and then also, like, well, they're they're fascinating to look at. The they all seem to take their own shape and it's almost like a, a strange, uh, you know, a lot of sculpture is taking on this very industrial look now. And it has that kind of multi-artist contribution <laughs> to make these things, you know, and they don't even know they're being artists. They're being so practical. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, uh... Yeah. What I'm really conscious of is like, I don't want to, I don't want necessarily want to, just mindlessly replicate a colonial gaze through my act of photography. Uh, but I think one important thing is that as I think about it, like just looking at this image too, is that 
you know, it's a very basic thing where this site no longer exists. Like this intersection has completely changed in the, in the span of like, say, two or three years. And again, I think that's the part like where it becomes a very important underpinning for this endeavor, where it's not simply an ex- aesthetic exercise, but it's kind of committed to yeah. the importance of what's happening right now in the city. They do have an air, uh, uh, air about them. They, uh, and you know, I think someone that would live there, they probably have never paid attention to them. They've probably been there the whole time. And, uh, and so it's, uh, yeah. yeah. And it's just, it's just a part of the, the visual landscape for them, you know? Um, and so for you, it's, uh, I think in some ways your, your, your approach to looking at the time, looking at the, the shifts and stuff like that, it's, uh, like you said, it's not a colonial gaze per se. It's a, uh, it's an investigate, uh, investigative, um, yeah, am I using the right, am I saying it right? I don't think so. I'm probably going to get picked on in the comments, but, uh, uh, you're, you, you can tell you're doing an investigation and you, you have this consciousness of time that's, that's manifesting itself. And, um, it's, it's really interesting.